get out to the field, do what I love. As long as I'm out here, I don't care where I end up. Big old buck on the ground, about had a heart attack. Can't wait to tell the boys back at the bone shack. Bring it on back, bring it on back to the bone shack. Bring it on back, bring it on back to the bone shack. It's got antlers on the wall, rusty old nails. You can sit and listen to the stories you can tell. Listen about the one that got away. With a big old rack Can't wait to hear the story From the bone shack Bring it on back Bring it on back To the bone shack Bring it on back Bring it on back To the bone shack Bring it on back to the bone shack. It's late summer 2015 and my brother Sean and I are hunting the desert hills of southern Idaho. We were only able to get one weekend of preseason scouting in, but in the first 10 minutes of glassing we were able to find the type of buck that dreams are made of. Even being over a mile away in low light conditions, we could tell he was something special. We found several other decent bucks as well, but nothing we were going to chase opening weekend. We pulled an all-nighter and got there the day before season at daylight in hopes of spotting the dream buck one last time before the opener. We couldn't relocate him though, so we hit the four-wheelers after getting camp set up to try and find him or something else to chase in the morning. Drove all night, didn't sleep, showed up for something this morning, all to look for this buck. Coming up to do some evening scouting looking for this guy, right next to the road. Here he be. Jeez. That's huge. Plus that. A nightmarish outcome for this once beautiful dream buck. What appeared to be a bullet hole in his front shoulder explained the likely cause of death. Later that evening, the sun set on a smoky horizon and we had no opening day shooters to chase the next morning. Opening day turned out to be bright and somewhat smoky, but we were able to find a buck from about two miles away that appeared to meet our five-year-old minimum criteria. They were in a decent spot for a stock, so I got my stuff together and hopped on the four-wheeler and headed their direction. The wind direction wasn't great once on top of the plateau, so I was going to have to alter my direction of attack. But before I could get into position, something else caught my eye. It's a straight up monstrosity of a buck, with drop tines and trash on trash. Immediately, all interest in the 180 class buck I was after was lost. This was definitely the biggest buck I'd ever seen. After swapping out the boots for stocking shoes and making sure he was still there, I grabbed the bow and the stock was on.
With a light breeze blowing in my face, I was able to get within 100 yards without being detected. They'd moved into some thick brush, so getting any closer was going to require stealthiness on all fours. I eventually came to a dead end blocked by chaparral. The closer bucks of the herd now were within 30 yards and there was no way to get any closer. There were several shot opportunities at the younger bucks, but the target stayed protected in the cover of the mahogany. I held tight as he fed less than 35 yards away, hoping that with a little patience he'd present a good shot. The old heart really started pumping as he started heading my direction but stalled to eat on a tree. If he continued this same path, we'd be looking at a 30 yard broadside shot. But instead, he hung out at this tree for nearly 10 minutes. And as was bound to happen eventually, one of the smaller bucks sensed something and started heading the other direction. Of course, the target followed. I got to my feet, stepped into the clearing, and ranged him nearly 50 yards. A few more steps and he would be out of range. Bummer, he never did stop for a shot. Then of course a smaller buck blew which got the rest of the bucks to pick up their pace. Thankfully, they weren't terribly spooked though as they went out of sight. After watching the biggest buck I've ever seen slip away from my fingertips, I went back to my backpack and got a hold of Sean. We hadn't been looking long when Sean spotted the biggest buck he'd ever seen. He was bedded down with his other bucks only 40 yards off a main four-wheeler road. This made for easy stalking, but at any moment it could be blown, and the last thing we wanted is for some other hunters to know this buck even existed. Just as I'd cut the distance to within 40 yards, there was a sound of four-wheelers down below, and they were getting closer. The bucks heard it too, so I stood up, drew back, and hoped he'd give a shot before he busted. As big bucks tend to do, he went from laying down to running, never giving me a good shot. We conversed with the other hunters for a bit, who courteously went back the way they came. Of course, we followed the big buck's path, hoping we could get on him again. Is that near perfect? Base is broke off. After finding a cool artifact, again, we spotted a massive rack sticking out above the chaparral. There's not much. 
damage cover. I don't know if I'll be able to get very close. Yeah, you had to crawl. Stock number three in three hours. The same box. I was getting as close as I could without making too much noise, a young buck stood up that I didn't even know was there and looked my direction. The spike had me on lockdown, so as all I could do is wait and hope the big buck stood up and gave me a shot. Finally, the young buck had enough and he bombed out. This got the target to stand up, but not broadside, he was head on. He never did stop broadside for a clean shot, so again I got to watch him bound away. As he got out of range, I took off the Solvit head camera mount to zoom in to get some after stock footage. After a short lunch break, Sean and I split up. He went low and I went high. Not long after that, I located the big buck hiding underneath a big tree. I worked my way down and around and hid behind a big rock only 30 yards from his last known location. I could see his young accomplice but the target buck must have been hidden behind the branches, or so I thought. While I thought I had him at 30 yards, he had actually snuck out before I got there, and Sean was watching him on the open hillside, waiting for me to stick an arrow in him. He eventually fed into the brush and over the ridge, and that was the last time we saw him that day. We were extremely happy to find the buck first thing in the morning on the second day of our hunt. He ended up disappearing in this brush where he presumably bedded down. I made a move on him later that afternoon, but the wind wasn't right, so I backed out. Maybe he caught my wind or something, but he was a heck of a lot harder to find after this attempt. While trying to find the non-typical, I ended up locating several great bucks that would have definitely been opening day shooters had I not got my heart set on the big bega buck. But after five days of searching with no sign, I was ready for some action. On day eight, which was the last full day of this trip, I found what was probably our number two buck on the hit list. There was a pretty stiff easterly wind blowing. In fact, it was blowing so hard that it was tough to get good footage. This is actually from a couple days before, right before Sean put a stock on him, in nearly the same spot.
This is what it really looked like as he made his way to his bedding area. The plan was to ambush him before he got there. With the Solbit head camera mount on and the camcorder rolling, I circled wide to get downwind. The target exposed himself just as I was getting behind some tall sagebrush that was used for cover. The target buck wasn't the only animal to stay out of sight from, though. There were several other does and lots of jumpy cattle around as well. I kept inching forward until the buck crossed a clearing not more than a hundred yards off. With an arrow knocked and his vision blocked, it was time to make the final push. So I took off the Solvit head camera mount and replayed the footage. It all happened really fast, but I was able to stop him at 42 yards. The arrow's impact, visible on the video, confirmed what felt like a good shot. As he made his escape through the trees, I pulled off the Solvit head camera mount and filmed what ended up being his last few steps. He never came out from behind the junipers, so either he ran straight away or there he lay. spot and then uh, back out and come back in a little while. Maybe with some help. Oh, yes. Oh, right there. Well, the arrow sure was easy to find, and it ended up that he had only made it another 10 yards from where I'd last seen him. He is way heavier than I thought. Oh, man. Jeez. 
Jeez. Pleasantly surprised. Oh, he's been dead a while. Maybe I shouldn't have waited so long. Oh, he can't but complain. Better. He's got some stuff going on down here at the bases as well. Man, he is heavy, isn't he? Look at all that little things down in there. Wow. That's what we came here for. That dude's a hog, man. I like him. He keeps growing. He's been growing since day yeah. one. Yeah. He's bigger than I thought, for sure. Yeah, especially from this angle. Well, good job, man. Congrats. Thank Thanks. Let's get her done. Yeah. Team what? Solvid. Rocking the cam strap. Film it yourself. Head out to the field, doing what I love. As long as I'm out here, I don't.